And another bonus reason for taking the notes before class is that it also gives me the option to skip the class if I have to. But I definitely have not done that at all because I never skip classes. What is up people of the internet? My name is Avery and I'm a third year electrical engineering student at the University of British Columbia. At this point in my degree, I've learned that a big part of engineering is taking notes during class, looking back on them a day later, and then not having any idea about what you were taking notes on. And as someone who has had their fair share of failed midterm exams at this point in my degree, trust me, I would know. So I thought to myself, if it's going to be a pain in the ass every time I need to take a look at my notes to reference them, might as well make them look somewhat aesthetic to lessen the pain. And that's what we're going to go through in this video. I'm going to walk you through one course from each year of my engineering undergrad so far, starting from third year and then working my way back to first year. And I'm going to discuss how I like to structure my notes, what I like to do when I take my notes, and how my notes change depending on the type of class that I have. But before we get into that, there are two disclaimers that I need to get out of the way first. For one, don't ask me to share my notes with you because I'm going to say no. And two, all that I do when I take my notes is pretty much exactly copy down the notes from the lecture slides or what the professor is writing down. So don't expect any tips on how to take notes that will enhance your understanding of the material because, well, I don't know how. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. We're going to start with ELEC 342, which happens to be my second highest grade in my entire uni career so far. This course covers electromechanical energy conversion and transmission, touching on concepts such as magnetic circuits, transformers, motors, and generators. The notes that I took for this course were from a mix of the lecture slides and a set of YouTube videos that the professor had posted on his YouTube channel. Right off the bat, let's discuss how I like to structure my notes for any given class. I will always put the course name and topic at the top of the page and a highlighter strip to signify the top of the page. I like using bullet points for my notes and then also dashed bullets underneath for notes that build upon certain bullet points. Subheadings, depending on how I'm feeling, are capitalized sometimes, but they are always underlined and highlighted. Squiggly underlines are of a lower hierarchy than straight underlines, and I always have a squiggly underline for examples and example problems. And as you may have noticed already, I do like to stick with one color theme for each of my courses, and that only started in third year. And I honestly don't know why I chose pink for a course about motors and transformers, but I just kept with it for the whole duration of the term. Some other things that you may have noticed about my notes for this class is that I like to highlight certain concepts and also use these boxes around important formula, as it just helps to make the important formula and equations stand out. I also like to incorporate a decent number of diagrams and figures into my notes, whether they are hand-drawn or screenshotted from the lecture slides. I'm personally not the best artist, so I tend to take quite a few screenshots of diagrams and models from the lecture slides quite a bit. But whenever I can, especially with the circuits, I do my best to draw them out myself to have more control over how much space different things are going to take up. This course is an extension of a typical electric circuits class, as you may have seen a bunch of circuit diagrams and a lot of equations being used in my notes. For this class specifically, our exams were held on a website called WebWork, where you would put in your numerical answers into the answer boxes, and then you could check your answers as many times as you wished within the allotted time period. However, you were not graded based on the work that you showed, rather you were only graded based on the final answer to get marks. So because of this, and because of the sheer number of calculations and formula that we had to remember and memorize for our problems, putting example problems into my notes was actually very beneficial for how well I did in this course. In fact, some of these example problems showed up in our homework assignments, which then also showed up on our midterm exams as well. 
So overall for a course like this, you do need to understand the theory in order to be able to get going with the practice problems, but just doing the example problems will also help quite a bit for how well you do in a course. All right, we're gonna go back in time a little bit to one of my second year courses, Math 256. This course is your typical differential equations course covering first and second order ordinary differential equations or ODEs, systems of ODEs, Laplace transforms, transfer functions, Fourier series, and some partial differential equations or PDEs. My notes for this class were copied straight from the professor's handwritten notes, which she posted on Canvas at the start of each week. Speaking of, I know that this isn't possible for some classes as some professors don't post the lecture slides or notes after a class, but generally if I am able to, I generally like to take my notes for my classes outside of the lecture preferably beforehand, and that is for two reasons. For one, it gives me more time to make my notes more legible, which for a person like me who makes my notes like this, I would rather spend the extra time to make it just a little bit more neat. Second, it gives me a little bit more time to digest the concepts when I learn them. One thing I've noticed with the math courses for engineering specifically is that all the professors tend to go at an extremely fast pace during the lectures. And I just find that it just doesn't give that much time for you to actually digest the concepts during the class. And another bonus reason for taking the notes before class is that it also gives me the option to skip the class if I have to but I definitely have not done that at all because I never skip classes. As you can see in these notes, I use a lot of the same structures that I still use today, minus the single color scheme as I didn't think of having just one color back then and I kind of just jumped around with different colors depending on how I felt. Since this is kind of your standard mathy type course with lots of numbers and equations, there's not really many facts that you need to memorize. So just like before, having examples and practice problems in my notes was really helpful as a lot of them were just easier versions of the homework problems, which were just easier versions of the midterm and final exam questions. And also I made sure to show as many steps as I could in these examples since my answers for this class would be graded based on the work that I showed. So just having those examples, getting into the habit of showing all of my work, just so that I can get as many part marks as possible if I do mess up in a previous step. So in summary, for a mathy course like this, especially for engineering, get the theory down, get those examples into your notes, and then basically just grind practice problems until you start seeing differential equations in your sleep. Okay, not gonna lie, this last course was one of, if not my least favorite courses in my first year of engineering. But I really wanted to talk about a course that was more theoretical in nature, and none of my electrical engineering courses are that theoretical. So here are my notes for Chem 154 aka chemistry for engineering, aka the reason why I hate chemistry. So I actually have two sets of notes for this course. The notes that I took during class that looked like a drunk person vomited words onto a page, and then the notes that I made condensing the entire course into 13 pages in the two days leading up to the final exam. I'm pretty sure you guys can guess which one is which. Jokes aside, these notes were made in the early days of my uni career when I hadn't fully developed my sense of how I like to take notes yet. So that's why I have a lot of different neon highlighter colors in my notes and also just poor structure for my in-class notes. This course was just a little difficult for me to take good notes on just solely based on the fact that the chemistry that we were learning about was always highly theoretical and I couldn't see like the types of questions that they could ask us on an exam so it was really hard for me to take notes that would be able to cater to well doing well in the class. 
Also, there were like zero examples in the lecture slides as well. Looking back now for a course like this, I should have focused more on being able to actively recall the important concepts off the top of my head and also focus on memorizing the different processes and phenomena in order to, well, do somewhat better in the class than I did. But that's not meaning to say that this course didn't have its fair share of calculations as well, as there's quite a few formulas that we had to use in order to calculate certain, like, I honestly completely forgot because I purged chemistry from the depths of my mind. But unfortunately, I didn't really do all of that and this course ended up tying for my lowest grade in first year. So in summary, for a course like this that involves a lot of theory, stuff like chemistry, material science, or biology, making sure that you're able to define the concepts in your notes, explain processes and phenomena in your own words, or at least in a way that you're able to understand, and then using active recall before an exam to, well, recall the concepts, that will definitely help you solidify those concepts into your brain. Or at least that's all in theory, as I've come to disprove. And that's how I take my notes as an engineering student. Hopefully you were able to get some ideas for how to take notes for your classes or get some tips for how to structure your notes based on the type of class that you have. Anyways, that's been it for this video. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button and bring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.